Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an advice in the Quran directly. He addresses us directly by calling upon us, by saying, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe. So if you subscribe to this title, you believe, you believe in your Creator, you believe that He's one, you believe that He is the originator of everything, and that He's in charge of everything, and you believe He is unique and one in His names and attributes, and you believe He is one in His right to be worshipped, in His right for our devotion, that He's the only one who deserves our devotion and our worship and our ultimate love and dedication, then you fall under this title, O you who believe. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who believe, you should listen carefully. Because this is something that benefits you. This is something that is going to be helpful to you. It's a valuable piece of advice. And the advice in the Quran, one of the most beautiful aspects of it, it's very practical. And the blessings that you draw from it are countless. So you just pay enough attention, put it in the right context, and you can reap so many fruits in your life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum, Wala awladukum an dhikrillah. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, don't let your wealth, your possessions, whatever you have, or whatever you seek, and don't let your family, your children, don't let them take come your attention away from the remembrance of Allah. Allah is saying amongst the most precious gifts that He has given you is what you possess. The wealth, the assets, the possessions that you have and the possessions that you expect to have and that you are seeking as your work as your business, as your profession, as your career, which is a great blessing from Allah. And it is halal. And it's something you are supposed to have. You are supposed to enjoy. It's part and parcel of you being a human being. And your children, your children, your family, that is a great part of your life. And one of the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He created us in this way that we, humans be, we human beings do not come into this life singular, live singular and leave singular. That's not the way humans are supposed to go through this life. Allah designed us in our default state that we want to connect. This is why Allah created spouses for us from among ourselves. And He enabled us to procreate and have children so we can experience compassion we can experience care and parenthood and we can ex experience different types of relationships that bring about the best in us these are great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in this advice Allah is giving Allah is drawing our attention to the fact that these blessings that I have given you to make your life more meaningful to make your life more pro productive, to make your life more enjoyable, to make your life more rewarding. I'm giving you these things, but they should not exceed their limit. They should not deter you. They should not distract you from the main purpose behind your existence in this world. And that's to connect to your Creator. لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله. Do not let your possessions and your wealth and your children and families distract you and take your attention away from the remembrance of Allah. Remembrance of Allah here stands for your connection to Allah, your mindfulness of Allah, your love of Allah, your devotion to Allah, your focus on Allah, your dedication to Allah. That's what remembrance is. It's a whole way of life 
that you live your life mindful of your Creator in almost everything you do. That's what you are, this is what you are created for. And we said repeatedly so many times that the Prophet ﷺ told us that we are born in this state of mindfulness and connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he said, Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al-fitrah Each child, each human being is born in a state of fitrah. What does fitrah mean? Your natural state. And fitrah is what? You are mindful. You know Allah. When you're born, you know Allah. When you're born, you love Allah. When you're born, you seek Allah naturally. That's your natural state. So this is why Islam is the natural religion. It's the only natural religion. And that's why it's always been the way of all the prophets and messengers. From the time of Adam till the last man to set foot on earth. It's the natural religion. So when people become Muslim and when people practice Islam, they're not adopting a foreign ideology or an alien methodology. They're just being who they are. They're just being human. They're just going back to what it means to, be, to naturally be human. That's what Islam is. Don't make it complicated. It is that simple. It's the religion of fitrah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, in the Quran, Allah, Set your face, and that means your whole way of life. Set your face straight on the way to Allah. For the religion, for the deen of Allah. That's the nature upon which Allah created mankind. That's how Allah designed you. Don't take the political meaning of being a Muslim or how it's put within a political context. That will distract you. Being a Muslim means being just natural, being, being fully human. That's what it means. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't let your possessions, which are a great blessing from Allah, your family, the good things in your life, don't let them distract you from the main reason, the main purpose behind your creation, and that's Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a warning and He says, وَمَن يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Whoever falls into this, whoever loses their purpose, their direction, for the details of their life, which is their possessions and the children and other affairs, you get so immersed in them to the point where you lose your direction, then you are at loss. You are at loss. You have missed the point behind the test of life and you have not fulfilled you know, the requirements to get out of this life in a state of success. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying, it's not only the bad things that take you away from Allah. It's not only the sins. It's not only the murder, the killing of innocent people. It's not only the zina and the fornication. It's not only the theft. It's not only the dishonesty. It's not only the lies. It's not only the backbiting and the slander and the gossip that we engage in. That takes us to the hellfire, or takes us away from Allah. The naturally inherently good things could possibly kidnap our attention and take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because we know that they are good it doesn't occur to us to check ourselves against them have we fallen completely for them to lose our direction or are we completely focused on our creator so the point is here if you're driving from here to Ottawa and on the way you decide to stop buy some for rest and to get some coffee so you go into that gas station and you go into that mini market and you start buying stuff then you look around and you like the place there is some greenery some trees some forest and you start wandering around and walking around and you spend five six seven eight hours and you miss your destination that's exactly what many people are doing Allah has given you the wealth as a blessing from Him. There's nothing wrong with wealth. There's nothing inherently bad about wealth or money. Money is just potential. It's just resources. It's how you keep it, how you earn it, 
how you manage it and how you spend it that's where the test is but there's nothing filthy about money money's neutral money's a blessing from Allah the same applies to your family family is inherently good it's a relationship it's for you to feel peace and tranquility and feel the connection the connectedness because we humans need to connect this is how we grow how do children grow emotionally they grow by this connection with their parents by this attention this is why they need the attention of their parents they don't they don't just need their physical presence they don't just need you to feed them and change their clothes and send them to school they need you to be there for them they need to see in your eyes and in your tone that they're valuable that you appreciate them that you are happy they are in your life they need to see that your work is not more important to you than them they need to feel that they need to know that the football match on the TV that you're watching is not more important than them and these days we have to say it as well even to adults older men they need to know that your video game that you're playing is not even more important than them they need to know that you care about them that you're happy to come back home spend time with them quality time where you put your attention with them yet this is how they grow this is how they grow and if we neglect our children we're gonna face serious consequences you're going to face a generation with an identity crisis who doesn't know a person who doesn't know who he is or who she is confused they really don't know who they are the people who are at loss they will fall for anyone who gives them attention or fake love they will fall for that person and they might lose themselves in the process they will fall for drugs they'll have faith crisis they'll fall for doubts about Islam and about Allah and about everything they start doing bad things they start getting involved sometimes in crime and bad things why because the parents were not there for them they were there physically yes they were there financially yes but they were not there for them they never felt the connection at a deep level so despite all of this beauty in the relationship how we grow and how we connect and how we flourish Allah is saying don't let all of these take you away from Allah so the point here what is the lesson in this verse the lesson is alignment alignment one day there was a man who came a very eloquent man among the Arabs during the life of Umar al Khattab radiallahu anhu when he was the Khalifa he was very eloquent a public speaker people admired him he was very well spoken he goes to visit Umar ibn al-Khattab and it was the habit that when someone visited the king or or a ruler and they would speak they would give some kind of a short khutbah like five minutes which shows their eloquence and their intelligence so he stood in front of Umar al-Khattab and he spoke beautifully and then he said this dunya we put it down this life we put it down it takes us away from Allah we don't want the dunya and he says there was a man with a white hair and white beard standing next to Umar ibn Khattab and he said Ala raslik ya hadha. he says take it easy O oh man take it easy Laqad you have killed our religion for us you have murdered it the man thought he was saying something something good then he says he says, can we make it to Akhirah and to Jannah with anything other than what we have in this dunya? Allah has given us this dunya to use it in a good way. To use it to make it to paradise. So don't put it down. Dunya is neutral. It's resources. It's how you earn it where do you place it in your heart or your hand you place it in your hand fine if you place it in your heart and it takes the place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's where the problem is but it's not the problem of the dunya it's your problem you didn't manage it well and then how you use it in a good cause to help people 
to help a good cause and not use it, not squander it, not use it for bad things as well. So he was silent. He couldn't reply to this. He was silenced completely by that man. Then afterwards he asks, Who's, who was that man with white hair and white beard who replied to me? He gave me that silencing answer. They said to him, That's why this was Ubayy ibn Ka'b. Ubayy ibn Ka'b. Ubayy ibn Ka'b. The great reciter, the great companion of the Prophet One of the most knowledgeable companions of the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't let these things that you have in this dunya take you away from Allah. I have, Allah is saying, I've given these things to you, so you use them to get to me. So your relationship with your parents, with your children, with your spouse, your relationship with your money, with your work should be balanced. And if you can put this within the context of your journey to Allah, that's when you're going to make it. That's the right way to deal with it. Put everything at the service of Allah. And then Allah will make everything work for you. As the Prophet said, وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةُ هَمَّهُ As in the hadith reported by Imam Ahmad, وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةُ هَمَّهُ Whoever has the akhirah, his relationship with Allah as his main concern and his main goal, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ Allah will give him a sense of richness and abundance in his heart. And Allah will reduce all of his worries. And this world will come to him, will yield itself to him. Even if it were to refuse, Allah would bring it to him. Why? Because the heart is connected to Allah. So give everyone their rights and put everything in its right place, but don't lose your destination. You want to make money, make money. You want to get, make more money, make more money. But don't put it in your heart. Put it in your hand. Earn it from halal. And spend it in something halal or something beneficial and a good cause. The same with your children. When you have your children, invest in them. Treat them well. Give them their rights in the sense of your presence and your attention and your education and everything. And... Spend time with them and help them grow into strong Muslims who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But do not let them distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a wife, love your wife. Take care of her. Treat her well. Make things easy for her. But you don't lose your sight of Allah. You march with her. You take her as a companion on your way to Allah. The moment she does something or pushes, she pushes you to something that holds you back from Allah, here you say, no, here's, here's where I draw the line. Here is where I draw the line. That's with everyone. I don't compromise my religion for no one. And then you help her figure out her way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I say this and I pray to Allah and I pray to Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. so this is one side that people sometimes get distracted by whatever halal whatever blessings Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given them and it takes them away from Allah. so Allah is saying if you fall into this then you are at a loss. You are at a loss and you don't want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that state because those people, when the moment of death comes to them, they would say, Qala Rabbi rji'oon. They would say, Oh Allah, send me back. And we know once you, that's a one way ticket. Once you pass through that moment, through that line, there's no coming back. You're going to see everything for what it is at that moment, but there's no coming back. But Allah has given you the tools to see everything as it is now. He described it in the Quran. He put it in your heart, in your fitrah. You already know it. And that's what the Quran awakens in you. So you see the reality of this life. And you see where you are supposed to be going. So make your mind now before that moment of death comes. But on the other side, we have people who treat everything in this dunya as inherently evil, as bad. 
But we say that's not the way. The Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith, in the authentic hadith, الدنيا ملعونة ملعون ما فيها إلا ذكر الله وما واله. This life is cursed. Everything in it is cursed. That might come as a shock. What does that, what does that mean, cursed? It means there's no blessings in it. Except, except when it is used for the remembrance of Allah, for your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the dunya is inherently neutral. Everything in this dunya, as long as it's halal, it's inherently neutral. If you use it in your journey to Allah, it becomes blessed. If you do not use it for your journey of Allah, it's definitely going to distract you. Definitely going to distract you to a certain extent, maybe not fully, but it's definitely going to, to distract you from Allah. And that's where the blessings are taken away from it. And this is what cursed means. Mal'una. There's no blessing from Allah in it. That's what it means. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the meaning compliments, the meaning of the hadith. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ أَلَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ Say, who made it haram? Who made it prohibited for them? The zina, the beautification. Anything good in this life, any blessing, anything you can enjoy in this life, as long as it's not haram, Allah is saying, who's making it haram? You can't make it haram. The blessings are a gift from Allah. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ لَتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقَ The good blessings of Allah. How come someone talks about them, they are haram? Then there are people who think or they seek nearness to Allah. They seek to worship Allah by making things that are halal, making them haram. Thinking this is how religiosity it is. Being harsh. No. Being a true Muslim and a devout Muslim has nothing to do with harshness. It has to do with the opposite. It has to do with kindness, with gentleness. It has to do with gentleness. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, uh, in the divine hadith, Inna rahmati sabaqat ghadabi, that my mercy precedes and is greater than my anger. Is far more encompassing than my anger. Inna rahmati sabaqat ghadabi. So, the general rule is the everything in this life, as long, there, as long as there is nothing in Islam that states it is haram, then it is inherently good. Inherently good is how you, it's neutral in that sense. It's a potential. How you earn it, how you manage it, and where do you place it in your heart or in your hand, and then how you use it, that's where the test is. That's where the test is. And as long as you are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the process and you align everything in your life to push you to the, in the direction of your creator, you, you're, you're, in, you're, in, you're in a good state. You are in the right direction. You are moving forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.